Hey, I'm Eric, and um, so uh, back in November, I um, did the Corora um, install, and now I want to take a look at Corora on KDE. Now, I, I wanted to do KDE first because KDE is what I'm uh, the most familiar with, and so uh, I figured that was the best way to start with something new. So let me go ahead and log in. First of all, let me just say I really like the um, login manager here. Um, I have to look up and see if it's SDDM or LightDM, but I really like how it looks. It's very pretty, very neat. Um, you know, it's it's uh, has all the menus you need right here um, and easy to find. But anyway, let's go ahead and log in. All right, so there it goes uh, logging in. Now, um, don't forget, um, this is a VM. So oh, let me lower this a little bit. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is a VM. So it might be a little bit slower uh, than usual. Um, this K with the gear, this is um, pretty typical. Uh, on Fedora, it's more of a blue background. Um, this one continues the theme as before. It looks like they put like a Gaussian filter on it or something, some kind of uh, blur filter. Okay, um, so this is not the default background. Um, this is a background that I, um, it's a picture I took in Shenandoah. So um, I really like this um, welcome feature that this has here. Um, now, Corora, um, basically, think of it, Corora is to Fedora what Mint has traditionally been to Ubuntu. Now, um, I know there's been talk here and there of Mint not being based on Ubuntu anymore, but traditionally, Mint has been, let's take Ubuntu, which is already user-friendly, let's make it a little more user-friendly, and on top of that, um, let's let's add some special features on, something that's a little extra special, you know, and they've, they've helped um, create new... Um, um, desktop environments and, and everything so they've done a lot so so um, I like this uh, Fedora doesn't have anything like this when you first start um, if you're using Fedora you basically know what you're doing is kind of how they're doing it um, so here we have some documentation which is great if you don't know what you're doing it's right there um, support so that should take you to their, um, their forums and then, um, you know, how to contribute, which is great. So just in case you happen to be a little more technical or when you become more technical. So I'm just going to click on new features here and see if anything. Uh... Looks, oh, there we go. No worries. Whatever it was. Let's uh, let's just blame it on the VM. It could be probably the VM. So they have DNF, um, which is a YUM replacement, which uh, Fedora also has. Elasticsearch. I have no idea what this is. Um... I guess it's a blue replacement because I would imagine that uh, KDE would be using blue. They got GCC5. Um, this here is references GNOME. So the welcome might be um, agnostic to the, uh, the desktop environment that you're in, in which case. In which case, Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch is a gnome thing. Um, so Plasma, they're on Plasma 5. But wait, there's more. They've got Ruby, Pearl, and Vagrant. Okay, cool. Um, very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. So um, they've opted for um, the, the setup where your desktop is like a traditional uh, Windows desktop. Um, so, you know, with KDE... You can either have um, widgets, or I guess you can also have widgets on this type of background. But you can you can decide to have it this way or not. Um, oops, it looks like I've added two. Um, so you could have this. I actually don't have a um, desktop on mine. That's okay. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get rid of this too. Um, 
So, uh, this is, uh, you know, just regular KD5, Plasma 5, Plasma Desktop. And, um, so, so this part here is the exact same as in, um, regular Fedora. Um, what's, so what's interesting is, so they have, they have Yumex. Uh, so I guess you could use Yomex if you wanted to. Um, the question is, why would you uh, want to when uh, when KDE already provides this? Uh, although I guess you could use it to do installation of new packages and so on and so forth. Um, so it's pretty, you know, pretty vanilla um, KDE uh, Plasma Desktop 5. Uh, if I go over here to the applications... Um, looks like they have a pretty decent amount of games, which is uh, pretty typical for KDE. Uh, for Office, ooh, I like that they have Calibra installed. Um, I, I use Calibra myself for my eBooks, and it is the best. It is really um, the only way to manage your eBooks. Um, you can import eBooks. Um, you can change them from um, Kindle to um, EPUB. Um, you can put them right onto your Nook or your Sony device or your Kindle. Um, it's great, it's great. So to have that already installed already is making things a lot easier for the um, user. Um, so it looks like uh, they have both Caligra and LibreOffice, so KDE's uh, Office um, as well as, as, well as um, LibreOffice, which, as you know, is multi-platform. It works on Windows. It works on Linux. It, I'm sure it works on Mac. Um, and let's see. Oh, they have Back in Time. I love Back in Time as a backup um, program. I used it for a very, very long time. And uh, when I, once I get my NAS, I'd like to start using it again. Um, let's see here. So for software installer is what they're using um, Yumex for, uh, which they've... They have a version that works with DNF. I'm trying to see if there's anything here that seems like really like wow they they've um, put something in here that's not you know that's not typical that's not uh, what you would normally find. Uh, I was reading system right yeah. Cable center. That's okay. Although I'm curious here what this would say in the VM. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, and you did see right here, let me go back, where was it? Was it, no, it was here? Hmm, where was it? Device viewer, no. I Somewhere there I saw that it actually was running blue. Um, energy information, here we go. So it is running blue as the file indexer. Um, all right. So what I'm what I'm curious uh, as well is well let me let me go ahead and, and do the so start the software updates. That's going to take a little bit. Um, let me take a look and see if there's anything within the system setting any like uh, special um, graphics or anything any themes. For Corora that are different than the than the vanilla one. So there's Breeze. It has the Fedora 22 one. Um, throw that away. So let's see. Ah, Corora 22 is the one that's chosen right now. So it does have its own theme. Um, although <clears throat> the theme seems to me very similar to the Fedora one. I don't really see a big difference from the normal one for Fedora. Um, hmm. And if I go to, oh, well, yeah, so it looks like more or less, that's that's pretty typical. However, one thing they can, hmm, let's download One thing that they can um, do a little differently is potentially they could have better multimedia and when I look here, yes, they have VLC and Handbrake already installed. Um, 
yeah so all right so taking a look at this um it looks like your typical um uh, your typical kde they haven't made too many changes to it which is good um, because you don't want to end up in a situation where if you have to switch back to fedora if um, corora ever goes away uh, where you're left um, in the lurch because they changed everything uh, at the same time um, they haven't changed so much that it's super compelling um, looking just at where they are right now in 22 um, it it looks like I would kind of do with Corora the same thing that I would have done with Mint back when uh, Fedora was just just in this place with in-place upgrades that um, it was so not recommended that for anyone that wasn't super technical um, you know anyone that knew less about computers than I did I would just install mint and and um, that way they would get all the codecs they'd get flash everything would work out of the box and um, I wouldn't have to worry about any issues uh, fedora you know used to be very dicey with upgrades and I didn't want anyone to have to deal with that if they weren't me um, it looks like I would probably install Corora uh, for anyone that was um, that I wanted to have try out Linux and I don't want to say and then go over here to get mp3 support and go over there to get you know the display drivers and I mean it's not really that bad it's on RPM fusion but um, people just don't understand you know they're not gonna understand why things don't work um, and so I'm just loading up Firefox here just to see um, if they happen to have flash installed um, let's see Maybe flash test might go to um, an Adobe site that I could that I could check out. Yeah, let's see. Check flash version. See if they have flash installed by default. Do, 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 do. That didn't go where I thought it was gonna go. Do. Uh, 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 uh. Adobe Shockwave. That's funny. Okay. So it looks like it doesn't have, assuming this isn't some, there we go, Flash player. All right, so it looks like it's not installed, but that's okay, because Flash is on its way out anyway, um, because even Adobe has said, even on Windows and everything, they're going to stop supporting it. So that's okay. I'll just go one more website really quickly. Uh... <laughs> all right i'm not gonna worry about that so anyway looks like it, it it's it's not too different which is great you don't want something that's that's so so different when you're um you know you don't want them to change so much that you're like okay you know this is not kde anymore and uh yeah that's pretty neat so um next video i'm gonna take a look um at uh gnome 3 and see what kind of tweaks they make. Compared with um, KDE, that um, a, a distro that makes just the right tweaks could be really, really worth it. So.